And we are live. Welcome back to the Rhino Podcast, the open episode. We just did a very good recap on our thoughts on the speakers race and how awful uh, some of the local media was. And um, in addition to that, we'll go to patreon.com slash rhinopod, pay a dollar a month and see what we said because it was so enthralling that you'd be it's worth your dollar per month come on you cheapskates get off your butts go to patreon.com slash rhinopod and join today caitlin happy new year yeah hey happy new year jeff it is a new year we have a new governor and her name oh. is maura healy well <laughs> i can tell you right now i don't know if, if the governor will watch this uh, other governors have watched this, <laughs> but um, I don't know if the new one will, but I know their advisors do. I know the people they speak with in the party do. And today, Caitlin, we're going to talk about a wonderful thing. Love. Uh, a love story. Oh. I read a love story the other day in the Boston Globe. It was it was endearing. Um, it was heartwarming and it was complete bullshit. So I, what Jeff is referring to is what we've been hitting at on this podcast for months. And it, the boss. It's, it's, it's a portion. It's a small okay. portion. And the other portions are alleged. But now we have confirmation of what happened and what we were referring to for months that everyone knew about. Everyone knew about this in politics. It was a very open secret. And the Boston Globe reported it as this love wins narrative. <laughs> so I'm going to start out. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And it's funny. I'm sorry. That, that, yeah. that, that is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. So Yvonne, Abr uh, yeah, Yvonne Abraham wrote this. Uh, I, I, it, Yvonne, I have a question for you. Is it heavy? Is it, is it heavy? All that water you're carrying for her, is it heavy? I mean, because it, does it hurt your back? Cause it's a lot. You're carrying a lot of water. You're doing a lot of heavy lifting on on this on this piece. It's pathetic. So let's. I, yeah, it was just like reading it. I was, yeah, you're carrying water. I mean, the narrative you're spinning. God, are you dizzy? Ah, <laughs> I feel really, really lucky. Meet Maura Healy's partner. By the way, I could. I full stop here. I could care less that she's gay. That is nothing no. to do yeah. with this. This has nothing I mean, to do with it. So don't go don't go out there and say this is some uh anti gay or anti homophobic type. No, 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 no. It's cool that she's gay. No one totally we, don't we, care. No one cares that she's gay. Nobody less. cares. But this is about don't. power. This is about power. Yeah. Newly right. inaugurated Governor Maura Healy formally introduced herself to the Commonwealth last week. Now she'd like to introduce somebody else. Okay. Um Governor Healy formally introduced herself and her plans to be for the Commonwealth. There's one more thing she'd like to share. She has a partner. For almost two years, Healy has been in a relationship with Joanne Lydgate. Uh, that right there is bullshit. That's bullshit. It has not been two years. Okay. Um, now here we'll get into why. Uh, but being girl, blah, 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 blah. Let me skip down to this. Um... She and Lydgate have been friends since 2010. Hmm. That's what I, I was in college then. Wow. 12 years ago. 12 years ago. But so Lydgate worked on Healy's campaign to succeed Coakley, Coakley in 2014, then joined her in her office, being head of policy and eventually Healy's chief deputy. So she worked for Maura Healy. Okay. Directly underneath. Directly underneath. Chief deputy, yeah. number two. Huh. I mean. Number two. So how did that come about? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, was it, uh, here's, here's the thing. What, was the relationship, um, did she just see her as a bright shining star and had to promote her to uh, being chief deputy? Maybe. Maybe she's really that talented. I don't know. Um, but that raises some questions. Interesting. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling down here. Um, let's see here. There was one part of this I really wanted to point out where it was. Let's see. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Uh, sorry about this. I'm trying to do this in real time. 
you know, if we had a producer, it'd be a lot easier. But no. <laughs> <laughs> so she left her husband, and Healy left her her um, her former spouse uh, wife, um, and they got together. But there's one part I want to get to, and it's where they said they didn't start seeing each other till after Lydgate left working for Healy. That's, that's, oh, wait, here it is. She left in the summer of 2020 to co-found and lead States United Dem Democracy Senator, whatever, uh, you know, protect voting rights, yada, yada, liberal, liberal, liberal pro progressive. She left in the summer. Um, their, liberal, relation liberal, here's, progressive, right. progressive. their relationship did not begin until a few months after Lydgate left the AG's office, they said. Well, sure. Massachusetts, if you believe that bullshit, I feel sorry for you. Now, there have been other rumors um, put forward. It, guys, doesn't this story just seem a little weird coming out like right now and then it just like neatly fits into like this narrative? Well, they're, they're doing this. This is cover. Like I said, uh, Yvonne is, is running cover for more. So this is like the cover story to deflect what the real thing is, right? So even in that, if you believe that, you're you're out of your mind. So they, their relationship allegedly, well, not allegedly, probably allegedly, I'll say that, started while they were working together because of course it did. Because of course it did. Um, now, one, there, this goes a couple different tacks of what we know and what's public. How did she rise to that position of authority as, as chief deputy? That's an interesting question. Maury Hilly was in a position of authority and was dating a subordinate. I won't even say if a Republican man were doing this. If a man were doing this, Democrat or Republican, this would be all over the place and a major, major problem. Uh I, I won't double standard no or what do you think I mean I, I have to think I, I, think I don't lot, think... right so like yeah it can be a double standard but also it's abuse of power it's an abuse of power for sure for sure and um you know faith, and of course I, 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 you know it, it's speculation whether it's um she rose to that prominence uh based on ability or uh you know networking or, or having a, having that <laughs> relationship right um so that's why and they have to that's why they're establishing this timeline this, publicly in this that uh, she says that they've been together for two years she's still married yeah they're married she's married to her husband mm -hmm. so like they she you've been yeah it's you've been, it, you've been dating more healy while you were what is it separated yeah. or like like what why why didn't you just divorce him yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off that aspect. I the personal aspect. I, I'm not gonna lay off that aspect. Okay, Jeff. that's fine. Go for so it. I, Go for it. I just you, I I just think that laying off that aspect is progressive bullshit. If you're going to literally have an affair, then just divorce. Just divorce. Well, but you it, didn't just divorce because that would have looked strange. Right. right. So there there's there's levels to that, right? If, you know, she, this isn't two attorneys at some law firm downtown doing this where I could say, okay, you know, they, neither person wants to get divorced nor, or disrupt their lives and they just have this relationship. Okay. That sort of makes sense. This though, this is just weird. This is weird spin that uh, I'll agree. It's forced. This entire article is forced down our throats mm. because it, it, when you read it, it's a clear narrative. Like don't try to bullshit us. Like mm. she was married to her husband. She, they had an affair. This is what happened. Just be honest about what happened. Right. Like she was more Healy subordinate. They may or may not allegedly, allegedly, allegedly started this affair before she moved on to another position out from under more Healy as AG. Like yeah. that th we've been hinting at this for months, allegedly, allegedly, but like, so uh, this this won't go away, and we were we were talking offline earlier today, like, oh, would this have affected the election? And we said this before the election because some other stuff that I'm going to talk about in a second had come out. Um, no, this wouldn't have affected the election. She was getting elected no matter what. 
Uh, but Boston Media sat on this, and it's just going to be watching. And we knew that we knew that reporters were reaching out for yeah. people. We're watch, on- watching Boston Media now. She's not going anywhere. It's like now. It's like what do you are you, do you how do you even live with yourselves? Like if you're running cover for her on this, like she's not oh, she's not going to do anything for, for you. They're, it's easy for them to live with themselves. They got what they wanted, a Dem, a Dem governor. I mean, like, not like she was ever not going to lose to Jeff Deal, but, like, yeah. it, it was, I, I feel like everybody at the Globe just promotes the Democratic Party and whatever they can do in order to promote the state and the power within that. I mean, like, they that's what they, they're almost, I've made this point before, they're almost worse than New York Times in that respect, Jeff. At least the New York Times tries to put out <laughs> stories that are dam- damaging to Democrats. They, they I mean, were, like they the, were, Globe, were, the the Boston Globe. I said the Golden Globes. Oh my God, it's late. And <laughs> I, I was in the water teaching swim lessons today for like two and a half hours, and I that usually boggles my brain. My brain, and I'm super tired. But anyway, the Boston Globe is just a rag. They always just promote the Democrat. Like we were lucky to even get Republican endorsements this election cycle from them. Like the well, the, the New York Times at least pretends better. And if there's genuine corruption or ill, you know, unethical I mean, behavior, even the Washington but, Post but hang on, report uh, badly on yeah. poorly on Dems when like the I guess the scandal is that big. Right. Um, but you know, I mean, the, the Boston Globe is just so. So they won't. The, 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 this, this I think is a precursor to I, I think more of the other actual scandal stuff is going to come out because uh, I'll say this. Uh, well, it was I reported. Think it, wait, hang on, hang on. It'll the in Turtle Boy Sports TB Sports Deal. This, there was a, a blog that came out uh, a couple months ago about alleged relationships between the governor and her security detail, uh, members of her security detail. Now. Nobody can verify because who's going to go on the record now with the sitting governor um, and go against that. But, you know, if it takes if somebody wants to do real digging, it's like this is a pattern. I'm sorry. This is a pattern of if it's true, like come out and deny it then if it's not, Um, because this is serious stuff. You wouldn't put up with this from any man. So why does Maura Healy get a pass? You wouldn't put up with it from a Democratic uh, man. Nah, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not I, now. Not at. Not after Trump. No way. Cuomo didn't get a pass. It took a while, but eventually, gone, resigned. Look, they they, they control everything. They're not going to lose power with anything. But like, what are we doing here? Who who else? Cuomo. I mean, did um. Well, Cuomo. I think it's- matter until a progressive in the state of massachusetts starts bugging more healy about this i don't think it matters i mean like that's the thing that i keep on getting back around to it only will matter when liberals start going against her and maybe that will happen based on policy alone and they'll decide to you know this could also be a, a slow burn i mean look if we run somebody decent in four years or three years if yeah i mean you yeah. know there are factors to play <laughs> we'll get into that in a second <laughs> yeah. uh we, we, but if but if there's a, a real candidate and i mean look uh karen polito has two million dollars in the bank uh, the bank in her in her campaign account that's not nothing that's that's a pretty good start and that's um, a state, state that's a state bank account she can yeah. run on this level can, with that yeah so she so she I mean, to a federal Right. To a federal uh, bank so, account. Right. So there, there's, um, there's options. That, there's options there. There's real things. And if there's scandal that's persistent, I mean, this goes to judgment. A lot of things are at play. She's going to have to I, – look, I would highly, highly, highly recommend. I mean, yeah, the, you the Boston Globe did go after Deval Patrick over some of the, the cor- corruption stuff, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Well, all right. I mean, the, the Democrats are going to have their hands out. They're going to go hog wild. Um, if Healy keeps it in check, if she doesn't go some crazy progressive agenda, you know, she'll weather all this stuff. But if she, I've given this advice before. If she goes too far left, raises taxes, crime goes up, and and you have this, 
forget about it. You'll have a you'll have you'll be underwater with your approval. And we're looking good for twenty twenty six. We we you know we can swing it back. It's like the the best thing Republicans have going for them is Democrats being in power. <laughs> so. Um, even in the state of Massachusetts, and we're completely in enough as a state party. Yep. But first, what we have to do, Republicans, is um, get a new chair of the party because we have a weak, feeble, um, crazy person who can't get anything done, who is getting, who is suing members of the state committee, who is now getting sued uh, by a private investigator who charged uh, $53,000. Um, to dig up dirt on Maura Healy. I don't know how successful they were, um, but <laughs> on top of that, and charge the state, and the state can't pay because they're broke, so they're suing him. Um, if you were, if you, okay, like, the, the guy better have gotten at least something if you're paying him $53,000. That's a pretty penny. Well, I would read the report and be like, are you kidding? Like, I don't know how that works. Like, you know, do you get what did you find out? Well, we found out she had a relationship with her former chief of, uh, you know, deputy chief. Uh, well, that was, you know, well, like, like you didn't tell me anything. Everybody knew that. I want, you know, you need good stuff. That's worth 50K. Um, here's here's what boggles my mind. So there, there's there's two schools of thought. And I want to get your opinion on this. It's a totally legitimate and um, correct thing for a state party to go after and do oppo research on their opponent. The, the Dems do it for us. We do it for them. It's it's it happens. It's that's that's all in the bounds of what we're talking about. I think that we. But we didn't. But we didn't have a real candidate that had a shot at beating her. One. I uh, think that if you were in such a sorry state without a party apparatus spending 53 grand as you could have been putting that into candidates especially maintaining the ones on the in the state house um right now lenny mira is going to court over his seat which sucks because it's like one fucking vote dude like really? yep. yeah and he yeah like it's one boat like they counted 10 soiled ballots and we the state party spent not even the state party. The state chair spent fifty three grand. Technically, he didn't spend it because they're suing us. We don't the have the money. Like I mean, yeah. if we're if we're really getting technical yeah. about it, we have we had no money to spend. He's we're being sued, or he. I'm mean, gonna rephrase that. State party and Jim are being sued because they have no money. So like, I know they say that fifty three thousand would have been better spent. But there's there wasn't actually fifty three thousand there to spend. <laughs> it makes me Jeff. That shit is like well, it's funny, but it's also no. no I'm it, laughing, otherwise I'd cry. <laughs> right. I mean, like it's kind of like bozo shit. Like I don't yeah. know how else to describe this. No, it's, it's just, just free. It's, it's, like he's a like loser. Lenny Mira yeah. is going to lose. Like he could lose a seat by one fucking vote, and you did this. I I, I think he technically lost it. Like it's done. Because until like courts intervene because of uh, like the, the courts, what's the court going to do, right? They have to go abide by the decision of, um, you know, the, I, I think I read about this. Like it's kind of, he's, he's kind of done. He lost, he lost by one vote and that's it. That's all that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, sorry, I'm not laughing at. And that was supposed to be, yeah, like. The, yeah. yeah, I'm not laughing it, at Lenny. So I'm, it's, yeah. no, we're not mad. Lenny did a good job yeah. um, in the state house. We love Lenny Mary. He's been on the podcast, but at the same time, like we lost another seat. What the fuck? I, like, I mean, like at what point do you reach <laughs> fucking rock bottom and you're done? Like Howie Carr he, isn't even on your side anymore. God oh, damn. By the way, and his, his tweet threads of state committee members that are back, still backing Jim. <sighs> Whoa, the latest He's one that I saw, there. yeah, uh, Amanda Orlando Kess. He did one to, on her. Did, I didn't read. I haven't read have, them. Like I'm apparently, uh, I mean, I don't know that. Well, her ex fiance, and this isn't allegedly like has been is being investigated or up on charges, and I has uh, uh, assault on a minor child, rape under fourteen, like. 
he, what? Like he he her ex fiance. Yeah. Or well, we, or that's what they were in a relationship I, apparently, but with well they're the, not together anymore. But like obviously, we'll but it. yeah, but still, it's like that's some Howie or whoever's running that account. Not a, I doubt it's Howie. It might be how Kat. how is Howie Carr got better oppo ability than fucking mass GOP? Because <laughs> Howie Carr has money <laughs> and resources. <God. laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's bad. So here's the thing. There is, uh, there, you can go, you can actually go on massgop.com and look up your state committee members and find out what sen state Senate district you're in. Or there was, um, I want to call it mass GOP majority has a sub stack. Now I have nothing to do with this. I don't know anybody what? who's associated with it, but they set up this Wait, website. What there's, there's something called mass GOP majority. And they have it's on Substack. They have a Substack. I'll I'll connect to it on the below this broadcast link. I'll put the link up if I can find. And it. And what do they talk about on this Substack? Well, they have articles. Uh, well, they have stuff that uh, Howie did. Um, and then, but below they have the contact information for your state committee person, your state committee manager, your state committee woman, and you need to call them. Um, but keep in mind, you know, about half of them can't stand jim anyway but you need to know yeah that. my state committee woman um is a good friend of mine and yeah. she's not a huge fan of jim at all so it's just like but you, we you need, you need him you need, to be eaten like we so what i would him. recommend if you call your state committee person people and they're like yeah yeah i'm not voting again i'm not voting for jim totally this is the next question you have to ask them or email them okay who do i call who should i call that i need to change their vote and then that state committee person better give them the like, oh, call this person because there needs to be a grassroots effort over the next three weeks because the elections at the end of January, if this Looney Tune doesn't. What numbers that now? Can we like, do you remember what the numbers are at? We mean for vote totals? He, he, has, he has less than 50%, correct? He needs 50%. There's six or seven seats that have gone unfilled. So state committee should be 80 at full at full uh, atten um, attendees, right? But there's- So 73? He needs 70, half of- 73 or 74. So you need half of that. So he needs 36 or 37? He needs 37? 37 if everybody shows up. But there could be some, like a handful of no-shows, um, which would drop- And they would in the pro- in the, in the pro the pro gym people would they would play games i don't trust these people absolutely somebody who's in the somebody who's squishy and it'd be like voting to... present in this in yes. the speaker house yes. game yeah yeah so somebody who's squishy who doesn't want to who wants to stay on the state committee uh isn't isn't uh, you know is too cowardly to, to say no jim's got to go um, and wants to play it somewhere in the middle and, and you know, th someone like that could get pressured from probably from Jim's side to be like, well, why don't you stay home? Because they're worried about them flip flipping them. You know, so it's it's it, it could happen. I mean, maybe it's eroding. Maybe it's death of a thousand cuts. And he's ooh, I got to fix that light. Maybe it'll change. But I'm not confident of that. He's got a shot at, at being reelected. If that's the case, I I may very well, and, and I'll I'll just run from. I know my state committee man is going to vote for him. So if that's the case, I'll I'll have to run against him, even if I lose. I don't care. Whatever. I'll just run. I'll just I'll get my name on the ballot, and come next March on Super Tuesday, uh, you can vote for me for state committee, and it'll just we'll have to rebuild for twenty twenty five. All you need to do is have a good mailer game, Jeff. Yeah. You no, I'd raise, I'd raise a bunch of money. I'd, I'd hit mailers at the, you know. You I have did, to have would, a good mailer game. Yeah. No, my, my mailer game would be tight. I, I wouldn't. I remember, I remember receiving John and Jacqueline's mailers. Yeah. yeah. They had good mailers. So I'd raise the money and, and, and set it up all myself. And I would just do it and I'd have to ask my state committee man, which he's going to, you know, I may do it anyway because he's going to vote for him anyway. But if Jim wins, um, yeah, he's yeah, go. I, he's. I, gotta, I, I, gotta go. I mean, if you win though, and he doesn't seat you, that's a problem. Hire a lawyer and go after him. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd handle it extracurricularly. 
Oh God. <laughs> I'm not going to play that. Um, all right. So January 31st is a Tuesday. Do we need to know where, do we know where it's at? I say it's even money if it's at a one auto. Owned oh by Rick God. Reed, which again. Is, yeah. Which, uh, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully you have some class, Jim, and, and scrape together some money and rent out a hotel room or a VFW or an American Legion or some such actual function hall. Um, I'll probably, I mean, if it's at A1 Auto, I'm not going to go. If it's at a real place, I might actually go. Maybe I'll bring the computer and we can do like a live stream or something like that because uh, that would be kind of cool and important. Um but yeah, go uh, look up Mass GOP Majority Substack, um, and you'll get a list of of state committee people with their contact information, and call them or email them, and tell them to not vote for Jim. I think Amy kind of kind of I'm sorry, Carnivale. Carnivale. Amy Carnivale um, is is apparently whipping up some votes, so good for her. Um, I think John Featherston is still in it. He's a good guy. I don't know where I don't know where any of this stuff stands, by the way. And I, here's so, the thing: I don't think anybody really does. Nobody really on the yeah. bubble knows the as vote totals yet. Yeah, John did a really good podcast with our um, good friend Alice, um, where he kind of um, struck by his messaging. He was very clear on you know the election conspiracy crap that doesn't help elect Republicans and plans for the future on what he would promote um amy carnavale has been um, on the background talking to people um I, again jim just needs to go <laughs> he just needs to go we need to start winning again yeah I, and we're not winning like at some point you lose like parts of the base like it's like after the elections you just see you know even the hard dark red gop like starting to move towards Ron DeSantis after Trump. And it's like, you're going to Mar-a-Lago to go mm -hmm. to Donald Trump's president. Like yeah. read the room, dude, he's done. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is. Um, the look, say Amy Carnavale wins. Um, look, I don't know. I think she'll be better than Jim. I don't, you know, I, I won't say she, well, she couldn't be worse because like literally anything can happen. I don't know. But from what I've, I think I met her. Uh, oh, actually I have met, met her. I, I think she's reasonable enough to just sort of bring us back from life support, right? You know, just start raising money, start cleaning up the internal operations. I'm going to have like whoever takes over, I have very low expectations at this point. So I'm not going to. Like, if they even bring yeah. in money, like that's a better the thing is, it's not making stupid decisions with money and making good decisions on messaging. I mean, the messaging part of it is huge. Um, and just making it look like a professional outfit anymore. Like, I mean, that just basic stuff, like the expectations are low. The bar is very low. I mean, the, the bar is again, so great. The bar is so low, you could like roll over it. Like it's not like you can't. Yeah, you, you can't <laughs> limbo underneath it. The bar is yeah. lower than that. Yeah. I mean, like it's like I... Um, no, I mean, like, good God, just bring in money and just message yeah. more effectively to what people are talking about. I mean, like, I mean that, but that's I don't want to. I don't want to read another three paragraph email from the chair. Well, I have ideas. I might, I might pitch some ideas to uh, to Amy if she gets elected, and I'd even raise the money to back it up uh, separately if I needed to. But to to make it happen. But l look, you know, just provide some stability. No major unforced errors. No. <laughs> Um, no, you know, no putting your foot in no craziness like that. You'll just eliminate the craziness, raise some money. I, you know, if you can maybe pick up a, a seat here or two at a special election. Great. You know, there will be a special election within the next two years. But you actually need to care. The thing is, is you actually need to care when there's a special election, like with Bob Snow, like you won't, you won't even care. Like, <laughs> yeah. So. So, then, you know, like, we get the drugs on the tail end. It's like, oh, well, you know, like, too bad about snow. It's like, are you fucking serious? Like, we can't have that stuff anymore. We yeah. can't. We're at rock bottom now, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, the only place to really go is up. So, um, <laughs> all right. 
I think we're going to wrap it up for this episode of the Rhino Podcast. Thank you for watching. Uh, head on over to the Patreon.com, Patreon.com slash RhinoPod. Only a dollar a month. Um, it's well worth it for uh, exclusive extra content. And um, I don't know. We'll see you next time. Anything else? Caitlin's moving. She's not in prison. That's not a... I know. <laughs> She's her, her... A little plane back here. I'm moving. I We just bought a house and... You it know, was really funny. the day after Christmas, uh, my new RTC uh, chair called me immediately and was like, I heard that you're moving to my town. So you need to be in the Republican town committee. I was like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Congratulations on being a homeowner. Uh, you got to set up like a sweet office or anything for you and Mr. Caitlin or like a den. Uh, well, we're going to be very lucky. So in this new house that we just bought, we have a living room, but we also have a back family room that is, yeah, it's like pretty sweet. Um, the house was built in 1875, which is kind of cool. Oh. Um, so it's like a historical, not historical house, but like older, which has some character to you should, it. You should set up a sweet office with like, um, a cool studio that you can, broadcast because i know you get a ton from time to time you do get requests from me media outlets other than me and like you know and eventually if you yeah. need to convert it into a room for little factual preps uh you can do that as well um now that you know yeah you, you <laughs> but yeah. you know all in due time i had to turn down one last week which was a bummer but yeah, yeah. all right all right, everybody, look and happy, have a happy new year. Uh, reach out to your state committee person if you're a Republican, only if you're a Republican. Um, if you're an independent that leans right, shut the hell up and join the party because, like, get off your Yeah, ass. you don't have a voice if you're an yeah, Indian. Yeah, I don't want to hear it from you right, if you're like, like – oh, It's like you talk about how much, you know, the state party sex is like, yeah, then join and start fighting. Like, that's one of the things that, like, during this speaker fight, I kind of got depressed with, you know, Matt Gates taking center stage being such a douchebag. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to stay around and I'm going to fight because this is worth it. And yeah. so, like, I mean, it is worth it because the Republican Party right now, not only nationally, but on the state level is going through some changes. And we need it's important to have your voice heard. And especially if you're a registered Republican. So um, do it. And again, I, I would love to hear from you all on Twitter. If you're in Massachusetts, Twitter, I always love Twitter. hearing from you. Twitter is now okay, it is official. Like it is the place to be. I was talking with so I was uh, I was at jujitsu tonight, and and we don't let you know. Just it just came up. We we're all talking about Twitter. It's awesome. It's the best it's ever done. Oh, and I forgot the I one think, thing I wanted I to say. The one it's thing I it was before i think it's it's the it's the greatest it's greatest now <laughs> you know the saddest part and if you if you're watching this right now and you see this you'll know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> fucking dan fucking kennedy who is uh, who has been on my was on my old podcast who i was a guest lecturer of former wgbh co contributor he was like with all the fanfare like him and renee graham i'm leaving twitter renee graham's been tweeting more than ever dan kennedy has like yeah, you all were never going to mastodon get <laughs> over yourself <laughs> no, but, but no but can you this, imagine how shitty mastodon must be jeff yeah, like really it's so bad the, the 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 funniest part there is dan kennedy who with with big fanfares announced that he's leaving twitter to go to mastodon and and such a boomer thing every fucking day he sends out a tweet on twitter about oh I've left Twitter, but here's all my Mastodon information because he realized nobody's engaging in his shit. Just just call it a day, Dan, and come back to Twitter. Give me a break. It is the place. You, Elon Musk is just – he believes in free speech, which apparently no journos do anymore. Adam Riley, I saw that you left Twitter too, and you're back. Um, <laughs> you know, Renee Graham, oh, yeah. Oh, um, you were seriously considering leaving Twitter? Please. I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's so funny to watch. I mean, these can you imagine dorks. being on Mastodon? It's it sounds like such a shitty like the thing is, is like I like calling Twitter a hellhole because it's really a hellhole, right? Like we're all in the same room locked together. Liberals yeah. and conservatives, fandoms all over the place, Taylor Swift fans, all of them. Yeah. K pop. Oh. Uh, but greatest. anyway, when it's, you it's the greatest. You, Instagram <laughs> Is like true social and parlor it's just like bullshit and like crap when you go to mastodon it would be like you amongst 50 bajillion other you know 
hall monitors who just want to, you know. I'd get I'd get limit. kicked off of there in a week. It wouldn't even, yeah, it would. I, I, not... A day, a day for me. Like <laughs> I, I would, I would make some like weirdo sex joke, and like they would be like, "Oh, they're hurt. Their feelings would be hurt, and you'd be done." Yeah. Yeah. All right, Twitter's awesome, and we love Elon Musk. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, we will see you next time as I belch into the microphone. And um, <laughs> happy new year, and let's all have a great uh, 2023. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.